And now without further ado, Rabbi Simon D. Reis. Thank you so much, Rabbi Mostovsky. Thank you all for joining tonight. I just left the, uh, the award ceremony for the Skokie Yesheva just in time to see my son's award. So <laughs> thank you for timing it perfectly. Um, I hope that tonight's learning will, um, will provide us for the Rafua Shleim. I'm sure everybody said this, um, for all the people um, who are suffering from COVID-19. And also, um, since it's the Shlosh Eskimei Hagbala, um, my hope is that our learning will help us to prepare for the reenactment of Har Sinai. So what happened in Har Sinai? We, uh, we got the Torah as encapsulated in the Aseris Adibros. I'm not going to call them the Ten Commandments. I don't know how it came to be. I'm sure there are scholars on this that know how it came to be called the Ten Commandments, but they're not Aseret HaMitzvot. They're Aseret HaDibrot. So I'll probably either call them the Ten, ten Utterances, uh, Ten Sayings, or just Ten Dibrot, or Ten Tavarim, as they're referred to in the Torah. Um, but I'm going to try not to use Ten Commandments because that's very confusing. Um, so um, the question is, why these ten? Um, many people have asked this. There are many answers. In the short time we have, we are not going to be able to cover everything, uh, maybe scratch the surface, but I wanted to um, give a smattering of ideas that I found that I think um, will definitely enhance my um, understanding of the the Sarita Dibrot and um, my um, understanding of our job as Jews, and I'm hoping that it will serve as a reminder to all of us and help us um, and help us also as well, especially in the spirit of Shavuot coming. So um, today, when I was teaching Parsha to my third graders, I asked them, um, I since there is no Parsha, but the Parsha class is there, so um, there's no general usual Parsha, and I didn't want to teach next week's Parsha because we have two Parsha classes next week, so I decided to uh, test out a little bit of the shear tonight on them, and I asked them, um, I can't really do interactive with you because we don't have time for that, um, but uh, I was extremely impressed. Um, and also thankful that they that they answered what they did, so I could share it with you. Um, I asked them what um, what they think should have been included or would be included in the Aseret Hadibro. If they um, if they had to choose ten of the things that would represent the Torah that we would get on Har Sinai, what would what would it be? What would they want to include? And uh, one of them said uh, one of them said Talmud Torah. Uh, Talmud Torah Kenege Kulam, because the Torah is the most important. Torah most important. I was so impressed with that. I didn't even necessarily think of that myself or that they were going to say that. Um, remind me of this later, uh, somebody, because this may uh, come up at the end, hopefully, if I remember. Um, and the other thing that was said, because I didn't have time also to have everybody answer, but the other thing that was said is, um, and I'm sure some of you would have thought of this because I also thought of this, um, is Vahavta L'Recha Kamocha. Um, why isn't Vahavta L'Recha Kamocha in it? Isn't that one of the most important? Rabbi Akiva says, Zeklal Gadol Batora, and it's uh, often reverse uh, um, saying that Hillel says, uh, don't do unto others as you would not be, want to be done to yourself. It seems like, I mean, that's what that's what Hillel answered the Ger. That's what Hillel answered the person who wanted to become Jewish and know what the whole Torah is about, standing on one foot. And that's what he answered. Don't do unto others what you should not want to be done for yourself. So um, remind me, these will come up because uh, my answer, um, in my humble opinion, uh, as from my, all my research, is that they actually are in there. And we will um, find out at least two reasons uh, why or two ways to see that these mitzvot and probably any mitzvah that you can imagine are in there, um, but particularly those two. So the first answer um, that I would like to bring up about why uh, why these ten were chosen. Um, first, I'm going to see. Am I able to share my screen? I'm going to try to just share. Um, let's see if I can do this, and you can see. Uh, I don't know if. Hold on one second, please. I'm gonna to try to share. Oh wait, I can't do that. You're not letting me. Okay, hmm. okay. 
they're not letting me do this, so I'm sorry. I, I can't share my screen, um, but uh, if should I be able, should be able to share your screen. Yeah, I it, it start on my I can't. This is this is a, a Chromebook, and usually I can with my students, but when I try to do it, it's saying share video, and that's not what I want to do. I don't want to share a video. I want to share this. Uh, I have a little, okay, it's okay. Um, if, if you have, if you're able to get Rebbe Mostovsky, just, uh, I, I made a slideshow, but it's not that amazing anyway. Um, but just a physical representation of that Sarah Dunty Bird, if, if you have it and you're able to share it. Um, but if not, then don't worry about it. Hopefully everybody knows, but we'll, we'll say what they are and hopefully you're auditory learners and you don't need the visual, <laughs> but um, it, it is helpful if it's possible for somebody to share it. I think other people can also share their screens if anybody has it. Um, that would also be fine, but um, we can manage without it. So, um, so uh, we were, what was happening at Har Sinai, the whole nation was becoming Gairim, the whole nation was becoming uh, committed to Judaism. So when, um, when and we learn the halachas of Geirut from this, um, or, or actually from this and from Gilat Ruth, um, which we also read on Shavuot. But, um, but so what, what was the Sarat HaDibra when I, we learned uh, they can't say the whole entire Torah to us while we're standing there, that would just be impossible. So um, same with when's in the mikvah, you don't, or when you're trying to ascertain whether they're accepting all the mitzvot, you don't ask them every single one of the 613 categories of mitzvot, you're asking them a smattering of mitzvot, including the uh, including difficult ones and including easy ones. And so, so one answer that's given is that the Aserit HaDibrot is a combination of uh, like a, a smattering of examples, samples of difficult and easy um, mitzvot. They don't really seem easy, but um, that's a criticism that some people have of that approach, but that it, it almost seems almost random that these are just 10, and certainly there is uh, there are many sources show that we, well, we're not even allowed to uh, treat the Aserit HaDibrod or any group of psukim as more holy than, um, than the other psukim. So uh, rather than making them be something um, special that stand out, we, um, they're just, they're just a sample of the other mitzvot. And in the Aserit HaDibrot, it is true that we did get these mitzvot, uh, the mitzvot that are in the Aserit HaDibrot. Uh, again, we said they're not mitzvot necessarily, they're dibrot, but there are mitzvot couched in them. Some people try to say that each one, even Anochi Hashem Anokecha, um, is a mitzvah, and there, there's the, the wrong and there's different uh, ways that you could call it a mitzvah, whether you say it's to believe in Hashem, uh, or if you don't want to say that, uh, or if you want to say that you can't really force somebody to have a belief, Hashem wouldn't force uh, us to have a belief, but that, like the Rambam says, et Hashem, to know, or to try to uh, prove that Hashem exists, to try to to study what we can about the world and science and math and try to figure out proofs that Hashem exists, leida et Hashem, to know Hashem, to study the world and to, um, and to know that Hashem exists. And others say that it means, um, and even that, that the Rambam himself means, shiviti Hashem to to always have it in mind that Hashem is there. There are ways to say that these are all mitzvot, even the ones that don't seem like they're actual mitzvot, like Anochi Hashem. But either way, um, these, uh, these 10, um, these 10 um, sayings, mitzvot, these um, are, uh, according to this first view, they're, they're not anything special. There's no like, oh, why these 10? It could have been another 10 but it's just these 10. So this is a difficult approach for some people. Um, so there are lots of other alternative explanations. And one of them is a famous one that Rashi says, and he quotes Rav Sadia Gaon, who, uh, who says that every single, and there, there are many similar and different versions of this, but I'll subsume them under this one heading, that every single one of the 613 mitzvot can be somehow included within the Aserat HaDibrot. So um, the Abarbanel takes off on this and um, there's a really great chart that, uh, or actually I should say a group of charts that Rabbi Mordechai Torchiner um, has, you can access it from yutorah.org, um, a set of charts that different, different um, Mefarshim uh, have on, um, 
on how to, um, how to categorize the different mitzvot or different themes of mitzvot within each one of the Sarat Hadibrot. You want to try just, to uh, share a screen again? Should, it should be working. If you click share screen at the bottom. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will try. Okay, hold on. Okay. No, it, it still says yeah. start video. No, hold on. I'll, I'll hold, hold on one sec. I will try. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, one second. Okay, so um, I'm going to see if I can make it bigger. Hold on. You want to start the slideshow? Okay. <laughs> okay. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that was like my, my, uh, my way of... Um, showing off my technology that I could click a button and it all appears. Okay, so this is how I wrote it, the 10 Dibrot utterances, because as I explained, it's not mitzvot. And this is just, um, uh, this is just the, um, so people can have a visual of it. Um, I may or may not show the rest of the slideshow. Um, I'll see how, how it goes. Um, but um, that will have to be in a little while. Okay, so first we have Anochi Hashem and, um, uh, well, let's just go through them quickly. Don't have any other gods. I think, I guess it is important. I'm sorry, I didn't start with that to show uh, what they are exactly. Don't take Hashem's name in vain. Um, to keep Shabbat. Honor your parents. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Do not steal or kidnap. Do not um, bear false witness against uh, your fellow. And is don't um, desire or uh, take action to acquire something that belongs to somebody else. Okay, so um, when, you, when we look at these, it just may not seem to some of us that these, this would be a perfect sampling on its, um, on its surface. It doesn't seem like a perfect sampling of a Torah laws. So that's, that's I guess, uh, where some people come in and say, well, we were becoming gay room and we just needed to have uh, some sample of some difficult ones to keep and some and some easy ones to keep. Okay, and then Rav Sadia Gaon um, famously has this Azharot, which are read by um, some, some congregations have a minhag to, um, I believe it's Sephardic congregations, to uh, say the Azharot on Shavuot, which is a basically a long poem, uh, which is very hard to understand, um, at least for anyone I've spoken to. I, I didn't even try to... Um, read it in Hebrew, even in English, it was very difficult. And I don't mean just the language, but just understanding how he fits in uh, certain things. But it was very important to him to fit in mitzvot. And then other people took off on that, as I said, the Abarbanel, and others tried to figure out, and Philo even, how to, how to fit in the mitzvot into each one. So um, under, um, some are more obvious than others, I'll just mention a few. Under Anochi Hashem, we have all the mitzvot because he mentions that took you out of Mitzrayim. Am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Mitzrayim. So we have all the mitzvot that relate to um, our relationship with Hashem in terms of Yirat Hashem, Ahavad Hashem, and everything related to Yitziat Mitzrayim. So we have tefillin and um, and um, and Pidyon um, Habein and um, and uh, Tzitzi. Everything that's every and Kiddush. Everything that is uh, and Mezuzah. Everything that you can. Everything that is a mitzvah of lezecher yitziat mitzrayim. Okay, lo yelech chalu himachiri malpanai. We have the um, avod dazara, and we have, um, sorry, I switched back and forth between Ashkenazi and Sephardi because I'm so used to teaching in Hillel Torah, and I say the Sephardi way. Um, so you shouldn't have any other uh, gods. Is the, um, that, that would also relate to kishuf and... Um, and um, related things, the things that would go under that are related to um, the way we use our speech, to be very careful with the way that we use the gift that Hashem gave us of speech. And um, so that would be Nadarim and Shavuot and, um, and Nazir and things like that. And Zahor Yom HaShabbat Lekadusho is, is um, Kedushat Zman. So it's the Moadim, and it's um, the Korbanot related to the Moadim, and Rosh Chodesh, and, um, and things like that. And Kabedet Avichavet Mecha, 
So um, depending on who you ask, that I, I found very interesting was um, that was for Hakarat Hatov, so Bikurim and um, and all different uh, different mitzvot related to Hakarat Hatov Halel. Um, we're all subsumed under Kabeda Tavicha Vatimecha, but um, another another uh, set of um, uh, another another parshan says that under Kabed et Avicha Vetimecha is uh, the uh, mitzvah to trust our um, Das Torah, our, our Rabbanim, our Chachamim. Um, so um, there are different opinions of how to fit in, but th this this number two that I'm, uh, the category, is just the fact that all uh, the mitzvah can be subsumed under one of them. And Lo Tirzach is, uh, is related to, um, the sanctity of life, and also um, just the how, how uh, interpersonal relations and ethics between other between us and other people, and lotin af would be would involve um, all the arayos and mishkav zachar, mishkav behema, and um, all the laws related to, to haran hamishpacha and related to nisuin and kiddushin. Mm -hmm. And Lotignov is um, everything that would relate to how we have the weights and measurements and, and um, paying people on time and making sure that we, um, that we don't underpay people and uh, everything related to um, the way we treat a worker and, um, and the way we treat other people's possessions. Um, Lotana, um, that is related to um, that um, the mitzvot that go under that are, um, I, I believe, the re laws related to Adim and um, and um, I can't remember right now, <laughs> but um, it's but that anything that would go under that category, lotach mode would um, also. There were very interesting things included under that, like um, kashrut, <laughs> Which um, so that's why some people had difficulty with the things that were included under different categories, and they weren't understanding them. So I think that there are some people who try to interpret why certain things were uh, put in different categories, and some people maybe chose other things to put in different categories. But lots of people um, took off on this. Lots of rabbanim over the ages took off on this idea that they could all be subsumed. And of course, the famous um, whoever, I don't know who the first one was who counted them, but that all, that if you count up all the letters from the beginning of the Sarah Hadibrot until the end, you come up with 613 letters. So they say this is no accident. There's no accident in the Torah. So really all of the Torah is included in the Sarah Hadibrot. Some even go far, as far to, as to say that they actually were on the Luchot somehow actually written on the Luchot, the first Luchot, the, um, the, all the Kol HaTorah Kula, um, but certainly all the Torah was somehow given in Har Sinai, um, so, which we do believe, and so how do the Aser HaDip wrote, um, if you could say that they all fit in there, but, um, but still maybe, maybe there are other would say that um, there were other uh, headings of categories that you could have fit um, those mitzvot under. So there are still others who try to give other answers. Um, one answer that I found with which um, Tzipora Heller uh, quoted from some different sources was that she paralleled in Perkei Avos, we just read about how the world was created with Asara Ma'amarim, with 10 utterances, and um, there are Asaras Hadibros, right? There are, it's no accident, all the tens that are paralleled, and without going into lots of detail, but it is fascinating, and a, ton, a huge fear could be given just on this, but that just like the world was created in the Asara Ma'amarim, just as the world was created with 10 utterances, and the world has in it basic natural laws, that if you break them, the punishment, so to speak, or the consequence of breaking a natural law is built into the law itself. So for example, we have gravity. And if we say, okay, I don't care about that law, I'm gonna just defy that law. So I'm gonna go to the top of the building, I don't care about gravity, and I'm just gonna jump. So the law of gravity doesn't care uh, 
about how anything, right? I mean, it's just going to keep its own law and we're going to suffer the consequences. And same with if we try to build a plane without the rules of aerodynamics, then it's a predictable consequence and any natural law is going to have its own built-in consequence if we try to break it because natural laws don't break. And so by the same token, the Aseret Hadibro um, do not, they, incorp they have in them um, natural moral laws that Hashem put into this world that the consequences, according to this view, that the, that the thing that makes these the 10, the Aseret Hadibro that were given, the difference between these and other uh, laws is that these laws, if they are broken, the consequence is within them. Meaning some of the, the mitzvot that we, that we keep our reward is in Olam Haba, but some, um, we are told in the Gemara that the punishment or the reward is in Olam Haza. But these 10 utterances, these Aserat Hadibro, their laws are, um, if we break them, then the punishment is automatic incorporated within it. So um, just for example, Lo Tirzach, if we murder a Chas V'Shalom, then we are gonna take, th that, that is going to have a terrible effect on us, there's something within the, the act of murder. There's something with, within the act of each of these that is um, going to be our downfall, just doing the act. It's not that we need an external punishment. There is going to be something within doing it itself. Like in Dostoevsky, you know, the person just lives with the guilt for the rest of their life, it kills them. Um, and crime and punishment. There, there's just no getting out of the moral law, the moral laws. Lotin af, the breakdown of society is the consequence of, of promiscuity, the, these things that happen. Lotignov, when we don't respect other people's property, uh, what is a world, how, how are we safe in the world when we can just bribe a judge or, or, um, or, or have things taken away from people that they earned and, um, and are not rightfully yours. But just, you could take each one and, um, and break it down without Shabbat, um, we are spiritually, um, we are spiritually empty. We will, we will um, die of a lack of, of um, a lack of spirituality. I, I mean, I'm not making these up. If you want specific sources, please contact me later. I have sources for everything. I don't have time to state every single source for everything, but that there are um, built in consequences and built in, um, built in, uh, uh, problems that we make for ourselves and for the world when we don't keep these, um, these laws. So that's just another um, example, but I would like to um, add two more that I found that are, um, that I, I found most edifying for myself. And that is, one of them is from Rabbi Menachem Liebtag, who, um, who when I taught an SAR, he came to give a lunch and learn to the teachers. And I never forgot the shear that he gave. And I found it again online, and I listened again to it, and um, it's just it's just amazing. I highly recommend it. It's it, I forgot the name of this year, but it's about um, it's about the, this topic, and he um, he he his position is that he says that if you look at the Aseris Hadibros, they look like they could be universal, right? If you look at each one. Um, you might think, oh, what's this? How is this a covenant? How is this a breed between us and Hashem? I mean, and it is a breed because it says in the Psukim, it says that th these are the Luchot HaBrit and they're called the um, Brit Aseret HaDevarim in two different places. This is the Brit uh, of Hashem, the Brit of um, Atem Tiyu Lin La'am, okay? Um, Atem tiyu, uh, that we are going to be to Hashem a nation. That's the Brit that we're making with Hashem. So, but look at these, uh, look at these uh, Aserat Hadibro. What is Brit about it? What is a covenant? What is special between us and Hashem about these? Anochi Hashem, Hashem is the God of everyone. Lo yelcha Elohim achirim apanai. Even the, one of the Bnei Noach laws of, um, the Noachide laws, the laws for the non-Jewish people is also not to worship Avodah Zarah, okay? All of these things, even, I mean, the, the non-Jews, uh, they could have a Sabbath, theoretically, although 
um, you know, according to Allah, but they're not allowed to keep Shabbat fully until they, unless they convert and until they're converted. But theoretically, I mean, uh, look at honoring your parents. They should honor their parents, n not killing, not committing adultery, not stealing. All these things should be applicable to everybody. So what is it? Wh how is this a brief? So Rabbi Liebteg says, if you look into the Torah, when, when is the first time the word Brit is ever used? You look at Brit and you follow the word Brit throughout the Torah and you, you have a parallel. And he shows how parallel language, not just Brit, but the words Tamim, uh, Tzaddik Tamim and, um, and Puruvu, they're used in the same context. The three times the word Brit is used, the same language is used. So you draw a parallel and then you see what, what's going on. So I want to do this quickly so I can get to everything. Um, so, um, so the first time was with Noah, that Hashem uses the word breed, he makes the breed with Noah. Because the Midrash says that what was Hashem doing before the world was created? It's very hard to understand, but he was creating and destroying worlds. Okay, and once, uh, once uh, the world went bad and, um, and he saved it through Noah, Hashem made a breed that he's not going to do this anymore. Uh, he calls it the re not pressing the reset button, right? I mean, not 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 destroying the world, but pressing the reset button. And now he's starting. He's starting again, but he's not going to do that anymore. He's not going to destroy the world anymore and start over. He's going to. Um, he's just going to continue it and not destroy it. So that's the first breed, and the rainbow is the O. Breed, so it's called Breed HaKeshet. Um, it's, the, it's the sign of the covenant. And then the next Breed, when we have Avraham with Breed, well, we have Breed Bein Abtarim, but the Breed Mila, and he, he makes this Breed with Avraham because Avraham is the one who uh, Hashem decides how he's going to not destroy the world anymore. He is going to um, be the progenitor of the people um, in the Breed when he promises him this, that he is going to be the progenitor of the nation that is going to be the example for the world in how to act morally so he won't have to uh, destroy the world again. How is the world going to reset itself? How is the world going to learn to behave morally? They're going to have a nation who is going to be their moral example. Okay, and now, uh, but, but and we don't have time for this, but Rabbi Lieb goes through how the nation needed to be purified and um, goes through um, all of Shibud Mitraim and then Yitziat Mitraim and then Matan Torah. And this is the next time Brit is given because the word Brit is used and same language also, same parallel language to show that this time um, when Brit is used, this is the Brit, this is, this is the culmination of, of our purpose. This is what the Jewish people's purpose is, that we are serving as the nation to be the example for the world and how to, um, how to have a moral, um, proper society. And the Jews are chosen to be the emissaries of Hashem in doing this. And this, these are called, the Luchot are the, um, the Luchot are the, um, and the Aserat HaDvarim, the Aserat HaDibrot, are the blueprints, so to speak, or the contract between us and Hashem. And um, they are, um, and, and if you go through each one, so the first one, I'll see if I could show this to you. Okay, so the first one he says, Rabbi Liebteg says, is Anochi Hashem Elokecha, because whenever you have a contract, you have to know between who it, who it is. Why are we doing this? Because he's basically saying, let's see if this works, he's saying, I'm your boss. Hashem is saying, I took you out of Mitzrayim for a purpose, and that is to be your God and your boss. Okay, and then he says, Lo you can't have any other bosses, no other competing loyalties. Basically, when we are, um, of course, we could have a lot of jobs but, but in our life, but our main job is, uh, is serving Hashem. So if one of our jobs, quote unquote, says, oh, uh, you have to work on Shabbat, we would say um, no, because we really have a boss and he said, no, we don't work on Shabbat. Um, so this is like the main one that, uh, not, not the main one, but one that I really wanted to focus on, and I see we're running out of time, um, is do not take Hashem's name in vain. What does that mean? What is Hashem's name? Shame Hashem is Hashem's reputation. Our job is to bring Hashem visibility in the world, is to bring Hashem's name to the world, as we say in Aleinu every day, that it's our job, the whole first paragraph, and the second one is Shekol B'nei Basar Our whole, uh, our goal is to get the whole world to to get to get everybody to um, to get everyone to start believing in Hashem. And the way we do that is through the way we act and the way we speak. We always have to mention Hashem's name 
and act in a proper way. We can't just act in a proper way, not mention Hashem, because then they won't know it's from Hashem. And we can't just talk about Hashem and then obviously not act properly. Uh, I was just sent this amazing, um, uh, this amazing story about Rabbi um, Morel, I think, or um, Rabbi Muroff, who um, I hope you all saw it. I wanted to share the story, but hopefully you'll see it online because I don't have time. But he, he returned $98,000 that he found in a desk to this woman and he went on a talk show and everybody saw it. And it was a huge Kiddush Hashem because he was wearing a tzitzis and he was called Rabbi. And he said that they didn't even hesitate because they were brought up as Orthodox Jews. And that's just the way that we were taught. They asked him, did you hesitate? And he said, of course not. That's the honest and right thing to do. We were raised as Orthodox Jews and that's what we do. Um, okay, so I see I'm running out of time, but basically the Shabbat um, is the Oat Habri. The, 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 the Shabbat is the Oat, just like the rainbow is the sign of covenant. The, um, hold on, I see I'm running out of time and I had a lot of things I wanted to, um, to add, but, um, Okay, so I'm just going to end with um, what I said in the beginning. I'm sorry, I, I didn't have a chance to mention the last thing, but I do recommend everybody going on to, if you have access to David Foreman or contact me privately, because I must share with you, it was one of the most amazing sharing I've ever seen is about why these 10 by Rabbi David Foreman. Um, and he puts together, and this is the last thing I'll say, is that what we mentioned before about Bahaftalarecha he shows a parallel because of the structure of the Sarah Sadibros. He shows a parallel of the first and the sixth, the second to the seventh, et cetera, et cetera. And he shows how the um the just even the structure and um the parallel theme of each one of those sets, um, but basically all boils down to um don't do one to others as you would not want to be done yourselves that I should have saved more time for because that's really like a mind-blowing amazing part of this and that um, it all boils down to the how actually all 10 of these and the entire Torah really does boil down to and that is why that was what was said to um, to the gear who wanted to convert and uh, basically uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that everybody knows that during this time uh, during this time we are focused on the two things that my students said is uh, Talmud Torah Kenege Kulam and Vahavta Larecha Kamocha because, Vahavta, because Talmud Torah Kenege Kulam is the way that we will, if we continue to study the Torah our whole lives, that's the way that we're going to know how to serve Hashem in the proper way and be the nation that he chose for us to have this breed and this mission of making the world a better place. And... Um, and the last, very last quick thing is that why is Shavuot a private holiday? Um, why is it so private? Because it really celebrates the potential. And my bracha to all of us is that we will fulfill this potential and be the Am Kadosh that Hashem wants us to be and study the Torah as much as possible so we'll know how to do that properly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Robinson uh, Mendy Reese. We appreciate the Shear and the Divrei Torah. Mazel tov for your son.